<laughs> what? Oh, wow. I have never seen this kit. So it is the Vortex Electronic Fishing Lure Kit. And it comes with five electronic fishing lures. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Happy Saturday and welcome to Retro Bassin. I gotta tell you, I feel like I've gotten more irons in the fire than YouTuber Cowboy Kent Rollins these days. Between my day job and my fun job, whew, it has been a busy couple of weeks. But hopefully we are going to get back on a regular uh, filming schedule here at Retro Bassin. I do want to get to some Bassin Bud mail that I've been sitting on for some of this since Christmas, as well as give you a preview of some of the different episodes you can expect to see in the coming weeks on this channel. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like the fish at old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. I often say so many lures, so little time. Honestly, so many episode ideas, so little time. There is just a ton of different ideas that I've got for episodes on this channel. Many of them inspired by viewers like you. So I want to give you a little preview of what we got cooking here in the old Retro Bassin studio. Um, well, let's start over uh, right to left, huh? <laughs> so I have been on a little bit of tear on the old Lornet Custom Paint Shop. They have been putting out some pretty wild patterns in some of their classic, classic baits. Here is a pretty cool uh, Bomber A in a paint shop custom color called Site One Crawl. <laughs> that thing looks toxic as well as a recent one that I had to pick up, an old school devil's horse in a color pattern called Big O Brim. I've been following Lornette Paint Shop on the old Instagram and honestly just about every couple of weeks they drop a notice of a new lore that they are just releasing and they only make 300 of each. So I've scooped up a few of these, I've got a couple of unboxings to do and a little episode on the Lornette Paint Shop is coming real soon. Not too long ago, we got featured in a Japanese fishing magazine by the name of Top Tao. And as a result, I ended up following and having many follow me different Japanese custom lure creators. While these may be new lures uh, in many respects, there is definitely something old school about the craftsmanship and the designs. So I have ordered a few lures from a couple of different lure makers and we are gonna be having some pretty wild episodes looking at some really exquisite custom baits, both from Japan and here in the US. Uh, here is one from a lure company by the name of Voodoo Chili. <laughs> Again, a new bait, but boy, that has got some old school lines to it. Uh, and here's another one I recently picked up from Handsome Lures. So stay tuned, Bass and Buds. We're going to be doing some unboxings with some of these really cool lures and hopefully getting them on the water as well. I also recently picked up a couple of vintage fishing games. One from Rick Klon and this one from Babe Winkleman's Good Fishing. I need to figure out a way to do an episode on this, perhaps a live stream with some Bass and Buds where we can play around to this game. I cracked it open and it's kind of a fishing trivia game. Uh, so I'm going to have to stack the deck with some folks that I could probably beat. So I might be calling old uh, Tom and Bluetooth Brandon to join me on this one. 
Many of you recently tuned into our episode on Old Ben's Lures, filmed with Michael Bacon at Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. I think this is the fourth or fifth episode we've filmed there, but what was kind of driving me nuts is that every time I go, I have one goal, and that is to do a proper tackle shop walkthrough of Bacon's. And every time I get sidetracked with some piece of old school gold. So in addition to filming the episode on Old Ben's, I put my head down, put my blinders on, and did a proper retro bass and walkthrough of Bacon's. So stay tuned for that, but here's a couple of things that you're gonna find there. One thing that Michael Bacon has at Bacon's, uh, the numbers probably dwindled since he first acquired them, but at one point he purchased 16,000 pounds, that is 16,000 of Bill Lewis rattle traps. These things come with no hardware, no hooks, but if you can tell here, they come in some wild discontinued colors. And for anybody who's been looking for the ever elusive Tequila Sunrise, well, there's a Tequila Sunrise bleeding shad for you. In addition to that, I had to pick up a couple of Bacon's Genuine Frog Skin Lures. And here's one we didn't show on camera at the time, but this is a frog skin bait. Looks a whole lot like a Magnum Torpedo, and he calls it the cattail. <laughs> kind of looks like a cattail, doesn't it? All right, what else do we have cooking? Well, I've been talking to my buddy Mark Ng over at the Big O Connection. He recently sent me this pretty sweet patch, and we're gonna do a proper history of Fred C. Young Bates on the show. So that is, that is coming, and that'll be a collaboration with the Big O Connection. Also, recently did some fishing with the Banjo Minnow on our most recent trip down to Headwaters Lake in Florida. And we're going to do a proper side-by-side -side looking at the original Banjo Minnow versus the newer model. Um, right here, you see a pretty cool hat. This is from Jawtech. So we're going to do some really cool stuff with Jawtech in the coming months. But first, is going to be sort of a little catalog walkthrough looking at the original catalog, as well as some of the current offerings. And you might have noticed the studio's getting a little bit more sparse behind me, and there is a reason for that. We are doing a retro bass in studio revamp. I have recently kind of moved a couple things. I've got a giant wall of tackle boxes over this way. In addition to that, I'm working on a little live streaming setup over here so that I can join some different live streams, be it Debo's or Baitman TV, Hella Bass, Epic Eric over at Smallmouth Crush, or of course our buddies John and Lindia at Small Water Chargers. And um, behind me, getting a little bit more sparse and for good reason. So I mentioned live streaming with Epic Eric. Well, after a recent trip down to Jim's Rebate Tackle, Epic Eric said, you know what would look cool behind you? is if you turn the backdrop into a full-on tackle shop. Well, Bass and Buds, I've invested in some pegboard hooks. I have got to get over to the old Home Depot to get some pegboard, and we are going to revamp the backdrop for the episode. So that is just a few of the things that we've got on tap here at Retro Bass, and as you can tell, too many episodes, too little time. Definitely keep on dropping comments in the comment section. I read and reply to pretty much everyone that I can, and many of the ideas for episodes come from comments just like yours in the comment section. So keep on letting us know what you want to see on the Retro Bassin channel. Um, real quick, what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of boxes to start getting through. I might do it over a couple of different episodes, but I've got some pretty cool mail I've been sitting on that I'm going to crack open right now. So let me get this studio cleaned up, and we'll get on with it. Well, speaking of my buddy Mark over at the Big O Connection, he actually did recently send me, after we sent the patch, a box of some goodies as well. Uh, this thing was sent a little while ago. He's probably wondering if I got it. I just wanted to open it for the first time on the camera. So I don't know what's in here. I imagine it's something Fred C. Young, Cotton Cordell related, but I don't honestly have a clue. I know it's rattling, and I know that it's been driving me nuts to see this thing sitting next to my desk for, well, probably too long.
<laughs> All right, what? Ooh. <laughs> do we have here? Oh, holy cow. Yeah, okay, now I'm super bummed I hadn't opened this sooner. There is a ton of old school awesomeness in here. First things first, let's see if he put a note in here. Uh, no note, uh, but I know he messaged me on Facebook and said this thing was heading my way. What do we have here? Here's a little bait from Cotton Cordell. I can't exactly see what this is. I imagine it's a deep big O of some sort. And, oh, sure enough, it's a deep big O in, ooh, a spicy little size I've not seen before. That's almost like a, I don't know, is that a quarter ounce? Maybe even less in sort of a striped bass pattern. Oh, that is pretty wild. I throw a ton of this bait in the next size up, but I've not seen this little guy. Uh, that would be some old school gold on a little spinning rod combo. So thank you, dude. It's the baby, the deep baby big O is that bait. <laughs> nice. Also see three or four of these, which looks like an original Lunker Lore in an eighth ounce size. Oh man, talk about another bait that would actually be really good on a spin rod. And maybe when I head down to my favorite apartment pond uh, later this spring, I might be throwing this thing. Look at that. That's probably the smallest Lunk Lure I've seen. I, I see the quarter ounce a ton. I don't think I've act, ever actually seen uh, the old eighth ounce old school version in person. And you got to wonder looking at that rubber skirt if that's one that was made over at Bacon's Tackle. I'll have to ask Michael about that. But we got four of those guys. And honestly, when we get the old Retro Studio souped up, that would be some pegboard gold right there. Oh, here's another uh, oldie but a goodie from Bill Dance, the Bill Dance Incredible Crawl. This is a, a wild hydrofoam crankbait. He had two different versions. There was the eel and then this one, which is sort of the lesser known of the two. But this is a crankbait. Looks a whole lot like a crawfish, as you can imagine. And I don't know if this is a sinker or a floater. Um, I'm pretty sure that dancing eel sinks. So this might be a sinker as well. But <laughs> pretty glorious package. And uh, there's the man himself on the cover. And last but not least, we've got an old school Cotton Cordell rattle spot uh, designed uh, by pros for the pros. <laughs> In a nice old chrome color. Oh, that's pretty cool. But here's my favorite thing. Uh, Mark recently got some foam mesh hats and <laughs> he said he was gonna send me one. I'm pretty pumped to check this thing out. All right, let's check this thing out. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, Mark, for the care pack. Look forward to doing that Fred C. Young episode real, real soon. Uh, Bass and Buds, uh, I'll drop a link for the Big O Connection down in the video description. It definitely worth a follow on the Facebook if you just want to get your mind blown on a daily basis of some of the just crazy designs that Fred C. Young had back in the day. All right, last package of the episode comes to us from our Bass and Bud, Bob. Uh, up in Eagle, Wisconsin, and Bob is a subscriber who is always dropping some good comments down in the comment section. So I'm excited to see what he sent us today. <laughs> this is another one I've been sitting on for too long that I kind of forgot it was there. I saw it today and I got pumped again. Let's see what we got. All right, so it looks like we've got some old school lures in here. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. I have never seen this kit. So it is the Vortex Electronic Fishing Lure Kit. And it comes with five electronic fishing lures. I think that I've got one of these crankbaits that I picked up from Cecil's Bait Shop but I don't have the deep crank, the other deep crank, looks like the lipless crank, or the minnow. 
Oh, wow, that is a beaut. So let's see what it says here. Uh, electronic fishing lures, revolutionary electronic fish collar. I think this is the one that, does it make a noise or does it have a light? Or maybe both, we'll have to see. Electronically generated sound attracts all game fish uh, from fresh saltwater trolling or casting. Of course, it's everything from bluegill to blue marlin, I imagine. Activated in the water, uh, built-in battery has hundreds of hours. State-of-the-art a lighted lure. Uh, this lure has a blinking LED, uh, specifically designed for night and murky water. So I think some of these are the lighted lure and some of these are the sound-producing electronic lure. Um, can this open up? I don't want to like, destroy the package here. Okay, it can open up. We'll, we'll take a quick look at these. So first things first, here is the electronic minnow. Um, I don't know that I see LED on there, so this might be the sound generating one. And you can see where the batteries go, probably right in the underbelly there. That's just a good looking little minnow bait though, isn't it? That might actually work. Uh, here is a crankbait. Looks a little bit like a fat wrap actually, doesn't it? <laughs> Like, I swear they stole that lip from Rapala. And is this one electronic, uh, or is this one blinking? I don't know. Um, I'm going to hold judgment on that one. I'm not sure which one that is. But, again, you can see the battery compartment right at the bottom. So here is one that is definitely a blinking lure. You can actually see the red LED or light emitting diode up in the bait itself. Sort of a translucent, so that's pretty cool. So that's a nice little blinking crankbait. I bet that would work. I mean, even if the lights not work, it's still a good looking little crankbait. And that one almost, if I break it, that one almost has sort of a bagley lip, doesn't it? You see that? Yeah, just a little bit. And here's an interesting one. So this is an oversized bait with an undersized bill. I don't know how this thing would fish. It's got like a big O body, but little baby bill. <laughs> and I imagine this one isn't translucent. Um, this one is actually, I don't even see a battery compartment. Is this just a, I don't know what this is. This might just be a lure. <laughs> That'd be weird. And last, ah, now that's a cool looking bait. So there's a Vortex lipless crankbait. And does this have anything cooking? No, this one may not be electronic either. Does it even rattle? Yeah, it's got a little thumper rattle in it, but that's just a straight up lipless crankbait, very rattle trap-esque. Looks like they borrowed a lot of the designs from the uh, classic lure designers. But yeah, that would totally work. And pretty sweet little uh, metallic tape on the side there too. All right, so there's another little package here with some other old school gems and a note as well. Probably should have led with the note. Uh, a good luck hook from Eagle Claw. Uh, they hook and hold. <laughs> Look at that, a good luck hook. I wonder if that would improve my fishing adventures, huh? I might have to put that on the boat somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Ooh, look at this, killer baits. I've actually been eyeing up a few of these on the old eBay. Um, probably should have said that out loud if I wanted to get them. But this is a cool crankbait from Killer Baits. I think this might have been more of a salmon bait than a bass bait, to be honest with you. Um, a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I guess it makes sense if it's a salmon bait, but that's a big old, big old crankbait. Nice metallic look to it. A lot of verbiage on the back. Cotton Cordell would be happy with all the things to read there, huh? <laughs> nice. Huh. So here we've got, looks like a uh, Rebel, is that a Fast Track Shad in a Color Selector Red pattern? That's interesting, it's sort of the pre-bag lures. That's almost like in a lot of the Japanese lure shops, how they sell lures that are used like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've also got a little Dance's Eel, or the Eelver. That looks to me, I don't know, 
but I think that's probably the newer Yum version of the bait. Um, that paint job looks a little bit too souped up for the original one uh, from Hydrofoam. Ah, we've got a nice little Acme uh, KO Wobbler spoon, I think. Pretty cool. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. That's a KO Wobbler right there. As well as this, the original The Worm, scented from The Worm Factory. Is this? Okay, so I was at Cabela's picking up a new trolling motor um, this week, which is a whole other story. But um, while I was there, I was kind of checking out the tackle, and I saw a lot of these on the peg still. So this is a bait I don't know a ton about, to be honest with you. If any Bass and Buds do, drop a comment down below. But it's still sold sort of in a one or two pack. Definitely has some old school flair. It's a pre-rigged worm. And has a fruity almost, I don't know if it's an anise smell or what, but that's a very interesting uh, bait. And it is the worm from the worm factory. Thewormfactory.com. Yeah, I don't know a ton about this bait at all, but I might have to check those out a little bit more closely. And let's check out the note that Bob sent us as well. Uh, hey, Chris, uh, here we are from the Great White North again. Uh, this is Bass and Bud Bob. Uh, my friend Mike and I, he's my Bluetooth branded, will have to live vicariously through you until the lakes are fishable again. So uh, keep the great content coming. <laughs> uh, both he and I are always on the lookout for retro gold. And now, thanks to your channel, uh, here's some extras we have scrounged up. Uh, he has a great pawn shop near him that we hit up regularly. That is pretty cool that a lot of this stuff came from a pawn shop. Uh, so the worm unsure your grandfather's tackle box. Uh, these are still made amazingly, but every grandfather's tackle box had one of these, and I believe it. Uh, regarding the Bill Dance's eel, uh, it says, what else needs to be said? Uh, I can't believe this hasn't come up on the channel yet. There's a lot of lures that haven't come up on the channel yet, but yes, real soon, I promise. Uh, we've also got the Cotton Cordell Floating Shallow Shad. Is that, what do you think this is? Um, usually I see the Deep Divers, and this is a color selector model. Uh, some lures are meant to catch fishermen, not fish. I agree. Uh, the Acme KO Wobbler, that was this guy. Um, this is another one. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only a Wisconsin thing, but they are a staple in every retro collection. Now, I definitely have some KO Wobblers. Uh, every time I see one, I think of Saturday morning cartoons. Um, <laughs> the appetizer for Bill Dance, Babe Winkleman, Al Linder, etc. Uh, the coyote's fish lure of choice, naturally. I've also got two Eagle Claw Good Luck hooks. Oh, I think there's two of them in there. Okay, very cool. Um, I might make sure I don't lose the other one. Oh, shoot. That would have been bad luck to throw out a Good Luck hook, I think. Uh, we've got two Eagle Claw Good Luck hooks. Uh, <laughs> one for you, one for Brandon. Everybody needs a Good Luck hook in their box. Uh, the Killer Baits Shad, never heard of this. But he bought a box full of them in new in-box condition. Um, yeah, I think they're probably looking at the same auction there. Uh, speaking of what I've seen on TV, the piece of resistance is the new in-the-box Vortex Fishing Lure Kit, which was awesome. Speaking of as seen on TV, we've got the new in-the-box Vortex Electronic Fishing Lure Kit uh, with a bonus lure. Looking forward to your background history on this one. And I don't know a ton of the history on the Vortex, but looks like I've just got another episode in the hopper. Uh, have a blessed holiday, sir. Tight lines. And remember to always fish it old school with Bass and Buds, Bob and Mike. Well, Bass and Buds, Bob, Mike, thank you for helping out with this episode. Uh, thanks also, Mark, at the Big O Connection. Bass and Buds out there, definitely drop a comment in the comment section and let me know which of the many episodes that are in the hopper you want me to put on the front burner. Definitely looking to get on a more consistent production schedule going forward, but need to know where to start. I'll see y'all next Saturday, but until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.